Good morning, children. Today in English in class 11, we'll take up the textbook Hornbill and the lesson, the first chapter that we are going to take up is The Portrait of a Lady by Kushwan Singh, who is a renowned author. He has authored many books. Now, if we talk of the title, The Portrait of a Lady, the portrait, portrait generally we talk about as in, it can be a painting or a drawing of a person. And the lady here he, that he describes or he talks about is his grandmother. So this is a pen portrait actually of his grandmother. And he beautifully unfolds their relationship and how it undergoes several changes. It is a loving tribute from a grandson to his grandmother and this also gives a picture of human relationships and it is a realistic account of how grandparents give their time, attention and love to their children and that is what he has recalled about his grandmother. My grandmother like everybody's grandmother was an old woman. Like everybody has grandmothers old, likewise his grandmother also was old. She had been old and wrinkled for the 20 years that I had known her. That meant in the last 20 years that he has been seeing her, that he has spent with her, she has always been like that. She's always been old. She always had wrinkles. So he has not seen any change at all in her. People said that once she had been young and pretty and had even had a husband. When he heard from others about his grandmother that there was a time when she was young, there was a time when she was pretty and had even a husband. Naturally, when she was younger, her husband was alive at that time. So, had a husband, that is, it is referring to the distant past. But that was hard to believe. It was incredible. It was unbelievable that she had been once young and pretty and that she had a husband. My grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. That is, uh, the portrait of his grandfather had been hung, put up above the mantelpiece. Mantelpiece is a shelf above a fireplace in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. And in the portrait that depicts his grandfather, he had a big turban on his head and loose fitting clothes. That is the way he was attired. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least a hundred years old. From the portrait of his grandfather, he could see that he had a turban on his head. He had an extremely white long beard that covered almost his chest and he looked, ap appeared as if that he must have been a hundred years old. He did not look the sort of person who would have a wife or children. For him to imagine or for him to visualize that there was a time when he was young and that he had a wife or children, it was very difficult for him to accept that thought. He looked as if he could only have lots and lots of grandchildren. That meant that for, uh, just as he presumed that his grandmother was always old, in the similar way he also considered about his grandfather that he must have also been like this only old and probably have lots of grandchildren. As for my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. He says that it was an unacceptable thought. That is, that uh, the thought... That is the idea, was almost revolting. What was almost revolting? That it was incredible, it was unbelievable that his grandmother had been once young and pretty. So he could not ever imagine her to be so. She often told us of this, the games he used to play as a child. And all grandmothers enjoy telling stories about the games the, the kind of life that they used to spend and share with their grandchildren. And children, grandchildren also enjoy that. That seemed quite absurd and undignified on her part. And we treated it like the fables of the prophets she used to tell us. 
so when she, uh, she would narrate these stories and uh, games that uh, she uh, they she had played with the other children it was absurd it was ridiculous and undignified on her part that meant that it was he could not really believe that she was once young and that she played games like any other child and we treated it like the fables fables is fables and stories actually stories which are conveying some kind of a moral or a lesson also so he they heard he and the other children they heard the stories from her of prophets she used to tell us of prophets prophets are messengers of god so they used to listen to the stories that she would tell them that she would narrate but at the same time they did not really quite believe it she had always been short and fat now here we are getting to know about her physical appearance here we came to know that she was old she was wrinkled from the last 20 years that he has seen her now we go more into the physical appearance of the grandmother she had always been short and fat and slightly bent that is she was not tall she was short and fat slightly bent on account of her old age her face was a criss cross of wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere a criss cross of wrinkles criss cross means overlapping wrinkles is the lines and the folds that appear as one grows older or if you see uh, the face of an old person there will be a lot of wrinkles so over here her face was completely covered with wrinkles from one into the other in other words she had a wrinkled face no we were certain she had always been as we had known her that is that he always thought he always imagined that she has always been like that that she has always been old and wrinkled old so terribly old that she could not have grown older and had stayed at the same age for 20 years so he has always seen her as old he's always seen her that she is old she has wrinkles and in the last 20 years that he has seen her she has been like that also and there has been no change at all in her she could never have been pretty but she was always beautiful now here we can see that we say generally feel and say that uh, beauty is skin deep when you are young you may be very beautiful but with old age the beauty is going to fade naturally out here he is talking about her being beautiful the beauty that he talks about is is her inner beauty that is uh, that she was such a, a deeply religious person she was such a satisfied person and that look of contentment that one could see her that made her extremely beautiful she was spiritually very evolved she hobbled about the house in spotless white hobbled that means uh, with a little difficulty she was not able to walk very well so about the house in spotless white that meant she was always dressed in spotless white clothes with one hand resting on her waist one hand always rested on her waist to balance her stoop to balance herself to balance her movement as she walked about stoop is uh, that when you're not uh, with old age or with illness or uh, you are not able to stand erect you your body is bent and the other telling the beats of her rosary now this is something uh, one should make a note of that she was always carrying a rosary now a rosary is actually meant to use for reciting and counting prayers so this enables a person to recite prayers or chant prayers so that is what she said uh, that is what she was always seen telling the beads telling the beads that means counting and reciting beads are of the rosary so that is the way she always occupied herself that she was constantly reciting prayers chanting her prayers and she always carried a rosary in her hand for the purpose of chanting prayers her silver locks were scattered untidily that is her, her gray hair over her pale puckered face pale when you are young your complexion is glowing but with old age it fades puckered is wrinkled so uh, what could be seen as her uh, locks strands of hair which fell over her 
face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayer that is she was constant constantly reciting her prayers there was no time when she was not seen uh, reciting her prayers inaudible means when you are not heard when you cannot be heard yes she was beautiful he considered her he is reiterating that she was beautiful that she had that beauty that inner beauty that divine beauty that she possessed she was like the winter landscape now he is comparing her that the winter landscape in the mountains an expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment what he says about his grandmother is an expanse expanse means a wide area or a vast area of land or space pure white serenity white is sign of purity it is symbolic serenity calmness tranquility breathing peace and contentment so just as one when one observes lofty mountains full of snow they are snow uh, clad peaks and mountains so over there one would feel that sense of uh, serenity that uh, sense of calmness and contentment in the similar way that is what she appeared like that is why he says that she was like the winter landscape in the mountains an expanse of pure white serenity breathing peace and contentment that meant that she seemed to be like this how that she was always very calm she was very peaceful she was very tranquil and contentment that is sense of satisfaction that she had everything in her life she desired nothing else in life that she was an absolutely contented person thank you